I arrived in South Vietnam in December of 1967. Our Qantas aircraft touched down at Thomson Hoot Air Force Base, which was then the busiest airport in the entire world. We were boarded onto a Caribou aircraft and flown from Saigon to Nui Dat to the task force area in Phuc Thuy province. The countryside below was hot and dry being in midsummer. A bombing run in the Nui Tvis which is a mountain range about a mile and a half west of the task force. In early 1968, during the Tet Offensive, the Viet Cong had taken over most of the towns and villages in Phuc Thuy province, including the capital, Barilla. On this helicopter, Captain Bosco, John Douglas and myself were the first to be flown in to access the situation and see who of our unit, the, the Vietnamese part of our unit, the CIA, etc., had survived the, uh, the uh, Viet Cong attack. I asked the helicopter pilot if he could get in reasonably close so I could film the battle for Berea going on in the distance. I lay down to take the film which saved my life as six, bullet hole, six bullets passed between Captain Bosco and uh, John Douglas where I had previously been sitting. Berea, the capital, was recaptured from the Viet Cong by the Australians after heavy door-to-door -door fighting. All the dead were then piled high in the city square. This is the commencement of the largest and most useless coordinate search undertaken by the Australians in Phuc Thuy province. Here we have a squadron of Iroquois helicopters, Hueys, transporting a battalion of Australian troops to cordon off the town of Long Dien so it can be thoroughly searched. But it proved to be, these proved to be highly ineffective. It's an early start for our unit to travel into Berea to pick up the Vietnamese part of our unit and then on to Long Dien to commence the cordon and search. Captain Bosco and Captain Chung, Dai Wee Chung, are in charge of the coordinate search. Unfortunately, it's a waste of time simply because no self-respecting Viet Cong is going to enter the town when there's a battalion of Australian troops surrounding it. Quite apart from that, it is very annoying to the many thousands of Long Dien townsfolk who are uprooted from their, from their normal activities for an entire day. Coordinating the removal of eight to ten thousand townsfolk is a huge job as facilities such as toilets have to be arranged 
barbed wire to separate the men from the women. So it is hours before everybody is eventually removed from the town so, the, so it can be searched with absolute safety. For the children, of course, it's a day's adventure and uh, not having to go to school. This is an intelligence operation which we believed would be more of a surprise and therefore more effective if we gate crashed our way through the jungle on armoured personnel carriers, uh, thereby avoiding the more observable main highways. Early morning in Vietnam is really an artist's delight, riding on top of an APC. This practice was stopped due to the vehicle being flipped over by landmines. The result of the operation was to destroy some tunnels and also detain some Viet Cong suspects. Another intelligence snatch and grab operation consisting of three vehicles. We are now heading to the town of Long Dien to pick up uh, Vietnamese local reinforcements arriving at the compound at Long Dien. Australians, book the lawyers, can always be assured of a welcome by the local children. Our South Vietnamese reinforcements are assigned to each vehicle. Being the final instructions to our group with the aid of our interpreter, Corporal Gao. Our unit's commanding officer, Captain Jack Lepaniel. Our convoy of three vehicles are now organised and on our way. One of the many French forts which dotted the uh, countryside. We have arrived. Checking identities for suspected Viet Cong. After checking and searching for 15 minutes, we leave empty handed. These short, sharp, snatch and grab raids proved to be far more effective than the huge, time consuming and useless coordinate search operations. On the previous day, we had captured Tam Han and Tuyet in a tunnel. Tuyet proceeded to give us information about other tunnels which we are about destroying. However, she did not give us information on other tunnels which held any of her comrades. An 
assortment of captured Viet Cong weapons, including the newly arrived AK-47 and rocket launchers. Test firing the new AK-47. District Chief of Hua Long, Chuta Tree. Hua Long Markets, one of the many projects completed by the Australians for the locals. Truok, who greatly assisted Sergeant Belendis and also myself on occasions. The commanding officer of one ALSG Vung Tao Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Fittick. Australian soldiers could stay for five days rest and recuperation at this residence. Graves of both soldiers and civilians from the French colonial days in Vietnam. Local Vietnamese going about their business in Vang Tao. My dear American friend, Lieutenant Perkins, previously from Long Dien, where he was uh, shot on the chin. Heading back to the task force at Nui Dat from Vung Tao after a day's rest and recuperation. Many hands make light work, but also it means many more get a day's pay. A buffalo boy and girl, the young lady turned her back on me and the camera. Australian soldiers could volunteer to escort a busload of school children uh, from Berea down to Vung Tau to enjoy the beach for the day. A statue of the Virgin Mary. About a tenth of the population were Catholic. A giant Buddha with a very benign face. Buddhism was the predominant religion in Vietnam. A pleasant day at the beach comes to an end. The police at that Do stayed and fought the Viet Cong. They did not retire at five o'clock into the capital Berea, so I gave them all the assistance that I could. The Viet Cong, when they attacked, would raise Viet Cong flags. 
just as quickly after the battle, Captain Kick and Lieutenant Farn would race to pull the flags down. One of them is given to me as a goodbye present when I left Vietnam. The morning I left Vietnam, the sky was awash with golden clouds. Amazing. The freedom bird, a Hercules, arrives to carry us away. And so we say farewell to fair Vietnam, we're heading home.